Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Second MRI, and this is a 72-year-old male with complaints of wrist swelling. The doctor felt what he thought was a ganglion cyst clinically and did an x-ray here and saw this area of soft tissue prominence in the palm. This is the hand here. This is the exit palm up here. This is a, actually proximal to the palm, the wrist area, but the palmar aspect of the wrist. This is the back of the forearm, back of the wrist. And so the doctor wanted to see this a little bit better by MRI. Also in this x-ray, we see that there's a lucency here, 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 at least three cystic areas that are causing lucency and scalloping of the distal radius. Also a lucency here in this bone called the scaphoid bone, one of the carpal bones. And this bone called the lunate bone is abnormal in appearance. So it's either rotated or collapsed. It's really hard to tell on this. So lots of problems within the wrist bones and also this big potential ganglion cyst to the palm. So the doctor wanted to do an MRI here to look at that and we see on, let's see, we have a couple different views here. This is a sagittal view and we see this bright area um, coming proximal from the palm. This is the palm. This is to the, in the palmar aspect of the wrist here. This elongated, well-defined uh, cystic structure, but it's not a simple cyst, it has complexity. Areas of fibrosis or scarring or chronic synovial inflammation are within the cyst but it is well defined. So this is either a ganglion cyst or a synovial cyst, and it does correspond to the site of clinical abnormality. On this view, we can see the short axis view. We're slicing through the cyst here. This is towards the palmar aspect. This is the back, the dorsal aspect. And we're gonna slice down, down, down to look at this cyst. So now we can see where it is. See there's some of the flexor tendons. Here's a couple other ones over here. This is the flexor carpi radialis. Is the other flexor tendons. And this thing goes right up into the carpal tunnel. This is called the carpal tunnel. And the uh, fluid collection is right here. It goes right into the carpal tunnel. And the median nerve is a little gray tissue that's flattened here. So this is compressing the median nerve. This could cause carpal tunnel syndrome. And now we got one other big finding out here. There's another complex septated fluid collection here. It looks like this may be another synovial cyst or ganglion. If we put up a coronal view looking in profile, we see that there's a little communication between the ulnar aspect of the wrist and this fluid collection. So it looks like the fluid is coming out of the wrist through a little hole right there and filling up out here. So this is a you know, synovial cyst or a prolapse of fluid from the joint outside. But uh, here it is along the ulnar aspect of the wrist. Now, if we look at these bone erosions, we're going to put up another view here. And we can see on this view where fat is bright. We see darkness here corresponding to the cyst. And if we go to this view here, we can see areas of scalloping within the distal radius. They look dark on this and you know, more intermediate on this. This is called the scaphoid bone. Normally, the scaphoid would be intermediate in signal like this bone, but instead it's bright because it's almost completely replaced by a cyst. So here it is right here, just completely replaced almost. And this bone down here is called the lunate bone, and that's not in normal position. It's rotated. We see it's not collapsed or fractured. It's just rotated. And we can see that a little bit better by looking on a sagittal or side view. Now, in this side view, it's striking because... We see the capitate bone here comes down, and this should be aligned with this bone in the radius. So the radius comes up, it should go to the capitate bone, but the capitate had rotated this cup where the uh, capitate bone sits. The lunate bone is rotated almost 90 degrees forward. We can see this cup, instead of facing upwards, is facing forwards. And so the ligaments of the wrist are unstable, and that instability allows the lunate bone to tilt forward we call it volar tilt, and then the capitate bone here that should be aligned with the radius is forced forward, and then it migrates down, and it can contact the distal radius here. And so this is a case of what we call volar intercalated segmental instability. The wrist ligaments are weak, and again, allow this abnormal rotation and also the proximal migration of this capitate. So very severe findings here, and all these... Uh, synovial inflammatory changes of the wrist and fluid collections and bone erosions. And so this may be related to rheumatoid arthritis. You can get lots of cystic changes and uh, synovial inflammation in the proximal wrist. So that's probably what this is related to. But uh, this is a case of 
volar uh, ligamentous instability. It's much more common to have the tilt of the lunate bone the opposite direction and the capitate backwards rather than forwards. And we call that dorsal intercalated segmental instability. But this is a more rare case of VISI, volar instability. And one last thing here this patient had, in addition to all the other things, a tear of their triangular fibrocartilage. So the TFCC or triangular fibrocartilage comes across here. Normally we should see a nice dark band of fibrocartilaginous tissue coming from the radius over the top of the ulna and attaching over here to the ulnar styloid, but instead we just don't see the normal tissue, so an extensive tear and degeneration of this triangular fibrocartilage, and then the ulnar styloid is chronically eroded, um, and that may be related to this synovial inflammatory process and the TFCC tear. So lots of problems, but the main thing is just to show an example of a rare thing called VISI, volar intercalated segmental instability, where the lunate bone is angled forwards allowing the capitate bone to drop down. And that's it. Thank you very much.